It may not look like much, but this plot of land on Toronto's waterfront is now ground zero for a debate on what role technology and corporations will play in future city building. In 2017, Sidewalk Labs, a subsidiary of tech giant Google, won a bid to develop a so-called smart city prototype on this 12-acre former industrial site. Though Sidewalk Labs declined to comment and would not grant us permission to film inside their Blue Lakeshore facility, here is where they demonstrate what amenities would be enjoyed by the 5,000 would-be residents, including streets that heat up to melt ice and snow without salting, and awnings for buildings that would lower and raise temperatures. While no official proposals have been given to Waterfront Toronto, the government agency that awarded the bid, leaked plans published by the Toronto Star have raised interest, but also criticisms. For University of Toronto professor Mariana Valverde, the specter of the private sector building infrastructure is worrisome. They had this whole infrastructure plan and in that they were going to seek private financing, maybe from the Canadian Infrastructure or through the Canadian Infrastructure Bank, to build an LRT and then they wanted to collect part of the taxes or be owed part of the taxes and development charges. The leaked plans suggest the tech firm would look to build major infrastructure like light rail and even sewage to service the area. The privately built infrastructure would be paid for by Sidewalk, who would then recoup their investment by directly tapping into public revenue streams. This would be unprecedented in Canada, where infrastructure and services like transit are seen by the majority as public domain and almost exclusively controlled and regulated by government. After the leak surfaced in the media, residents formed Block Sidewalk. According to spokesperson Torin Weiditz, they aim to educate the public about the potential impacts of the project, as well as to demand transparency. You know, the, the notion that we allow um, you know, a Google sister company access to publicly owned land in the city of Toronto, future revenue streams, um, you know, and allow them to develop you know, new um, forms of delivering municipal services, I think is something that sort of strikes a nerve among a lot of people in Toronto. Um, and I think uh, the way this uh, deal came about is something that we have to look very closely um, at and um, ensure that you know we we gonna reset the whole process and make sure that the interests of Torontonians and not the interests of a you know uh, one of the richest companies in the world uh, are at play here in the city. Sidewalk Labs committed 11 million of its 50 million dollar budget to public engagement and say some 20,000 people have been consulted. While locals packed the community center for the group's first meeting. A recent Enveronics research poll suggests that the proposal is still seen favorably by 55% of the public and also enjoys support from some prominent quarters in the city. Brian Kelsey is the Vice President of Community Relations for the Toronto Region Board of Trade. Uh, it's potentially positive because of the jobs it would bring to the city, uh, the potential for innovation, and most of all that the um, waterfront Portland's uh, quayside area has been underdeveloped old industrial brownfield space uh, for Toronto for, for too long. The debate around economic issues, including the pros and cons of private financing of public infrastructure, are bound to heat up after the submission of Sidewalk Lab's official proposal. However, experts and politicians are already deliberating over data collection and privacy concerns. Data collecting sensors and technologies would be set up to track the moves and habits of residents and visitors alike in order for Sidewalk's technologies to function. Given the lack of precedent, there are few rules around what can and can't be done with this information, and perhaps even less understanding of what this could mean for people and their privacy. For us, the biggest concern is around uh, data and data, data privacy, and what makes what Sidewalk has proposed different from uh, a number of other more conventional debates around data and data privacy in this country is that they're talking explicitly about uh, gathering and building applications and services off of what we call public realm data. Toronto City Council passed a motion to build a regulatory framework around this sort of data collection and smart cities, anticipating other projects like this in the future. The Toronto Board of Trade has also suggested that the public library would be a suitable host for this information, but critics point out that the concern around data collection is not just about privacy, but also what the possible monetization of this data might mean for the public. I think it is a huge problem that the company that approached the federal government and then through that ended up in this relationship with Waterfront Journal, that that company is a Google company. That's a huge problem because they own thousands of intellectual property patents. 
That's one of the problems. So that even if a lot of data is collected, and even if they say, oh, the city can have access to the data, maybe the city won't be able to use the data because you will need to buy a license for some algorithm that Google owns. That's how they're making their money. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association has now filed a lawsuit against the project and its proponents, citing potential privacy breaches and violations to constitutional rights, adding to the dimension of the implications for this project, which involve billions of dollars. The value of the land that is part of the proposal alone is estimated at 500 to 600 million. And Sidewalk Labs has already signaled their intention to expand this to other lakefront properties, up to 350 acres on what is among the most expensive real estate in North America, undoubtedly worth billions. A reality that has a growing number of Torontonians, like Mariana Valverde, worried that cash-starved governments could be conceding too much to one of the world's biggest transnationals. But what we have in this situation is not a development proposal. It's this sort of aggregate of a lot of different things, some of which we don't know what they are. So Waterfront Toronto is essentially giving away a lot of stuff, but they don't even know what they're giving away. Google is just one of the numerous transnational tech companies, including Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft, looking to make inroads as developers.